and welcome to another stimulating edition of Ben's Junk. And there's your obligatory joke for the day. Now, this is going to be the first of two of what are going to kind of double as behind-the-scenes things for Archive. And uh, the next one will follow in a couple of weeks here. But even though I just did an episode, uh, the, the tour of the Archive, what was that, six, seven months ago? My setup, if you know me at all, is in this kind of permanent state of flux. I'm always replacing stuff, I'm always upgrading stuff, I'm always, you know, I, I troll the thrift stores and stuff so often that when I find something, even though I already have it, if I find it that's a, a step up from what I've got, if it's in better shape or whatever, I usually just swap it out. Now, this has been the only real significant new addition to my setup lately. And this is a multi-system VHS deck, and this was made by Hitachi in Japan for the European market. Which means that, uh, yeah, it, it didn't fit too good into my American outlets. No uh, innuendo intended there. So, uh, and it's most basic, I just got this little $3 travel adapter here. And it just plugs into the back. Unfortunately, it's really loose. So I always have to use uh, electrical tape to tape it up to keep it secure. Uh, not a big deal. I mean, this thing has much worse quirks than that. Uh, but now I know there's going to be a lot of people out there saying, but Ben, you're going to start a fire or something. No, this is multi-voltage. So I don't have to worry about a step-up converter for this. And I've uh, used this several times. This thing hasn't gotten so much as warm yet, so I can't say I'm too concerned. Of course, I, I, you know, you always have to be vigilant, but, you know. Anyway, multi-system unit. It'll play all worldwide tapes, NTSC, PAL, CCAM, and the more esoteric variations on, uh, like, PAL, like PAL-M. And so, it's, uh, it, it's real nice to have. Having said that, there's a difference between a multi-system VCR and a genuine worldwide VCR. The worldwide VCR has built-in converters, which will go back and forth between broadcast standards. With this sucker, you're on your own. You have to provide your own conversion, so I'll get to that in just a bit here. But uh, let's open it just a little bit here, and you're not going to see it from this angle, but we've got in the flap here, we've got everything you'd expect. you got power, uh, eject, rewind, play, fast forward, record, the whole deal. Now, we get into the quirky part. With this unit, you have to know what you're putting into it next. Is it going to be a PAL tape? Is it going to be an NTSC tape? So, you've got a bunch of switches here on the front to switch between standards. And you have to set it first before you plug it in, because if you don't, and you put in something that this was not expecting, it'll just reject the tape and power down. And sometimes it just powers down anyway, but it's a guaranteed way to make it just power down otherwise. So that's kind of annoying, and we'll look at that in a little more depth in just a bit here. Now, I mentioned that you have to provide your own signal standard conversion, converter, whatever you want to say. So I have one of these. There are much higher end ones out there, but I didn't even know if this thing worked when I first got it, so I didn't want to dump too much money into it. I mean, uh, the, the unit I found at a thrift store, believe it or not, for seven or eight bucks, and uh, this was twenty, twenty-five, something like that. And it's a real simple little box. It's got kind of a mini USB sort of deal here, which goes to an AC adapter and into the wall. You can switch between PAL and NTSC input from the VCR output to whatever you're monitoring on. And that's it. Real simple. And since I've got everything out, I thought maybe you'd like to take a look at my amazing, huge, colossal British PAL tape collection, which consists of three tapes. Now, normally when you find PAL tapes here in the States, they're American titles that somebody bought online from some British retailer, not realizing that it, unless they had something like this, wasn't going to work in their VCR. They get pissed, it goes in the Goodwill bin. So... Uh, but I found some real legitimate British titles here, and uh, I'd never heard of this guy. He's a stand-up comedian named Jethro. And uh, after watching it, I figured out pretty quickly why this wasn't issued in the States. Very British-centric. 
Uh, like I said, I'd never heard of him. I, maybe our uh, British viewers can chime in. Is this guy really popular over there? I, I'd never heard of him. And I have another one of his tapes, which uh, somebody bought at Virgin Records, complete with the price tag. And then we've got the biggie of my collection. I guess this guy's kind of well-known over in England. I don't know. Maybe you've heard of him. Cliff Richard? Eh, I don't know. Uh, in all seriousness, though, this was, uh, this was kind of an interesting watch. You know, to us here in the States, he had a few hits over here. But for all intents and purposes, he's the devil woman, we don't talk anymore guy to Americans. And that's pretty much it. But here he's got his old band, The Shadows, behind him, the great early 60s instrumental rock group. And he only performs one of his American hits on here, We Don't Talk Anymore. And he does it towards the end. And The Shadows, uh, the highlight of this for me is the little brief uh, set that The Shadows get in the middle of the show. All instrumental, as you'd expect. And I, I thought it was fantastic. But uh, after watching this, I, I guess I didn't realize just how big he was over in England. So, uh, you know, educational. So let's take a quick edit here and we'll try and kind of sort of look at this thing in action, huh? And welcome back to Fish Eyed Lens Theater. Anyway, I've got this thing hooked up and I wanted to show you it is quirky when I try and load tape. Sometimes I'll take it and I'll just play it like a champ and other times it'll just shut itself down. So, we'll see what we get here. On the plus side, once it does get going, it usually sticks and works all the way through. Okay, so we're on, got a little green light saying it's in PAL mode, and there's lights that go across here, so it'd be like uh, PAL and NTSC and so forth. But let's see if I can use one of my Jethro tapes here and make it work the first time, which doesn't happen all the time. I found it helps if I guide it all the way in and land it with my hand. So, let's see what we get here. And it powered itself back down, so turn it back on. It makes some interesting noises, but I've had this thing open and I've looked at it and I've watched it work and it, uh, it nothing seems to be wrong, it's just kind of choosy. So we'll give it another go here, and it's not playing nice today. Okay, so far so good. We're in play mode and it seems to be going. It's really weird. And as I've mentioned, when I am doing transfers with with this thing, uh, the you have to provide your own converter. And when I do, it's not the greatest. It comes out, it, it bleeds a lot. The color just bleeds a lot. And sometimes the audio and video fall out of sync. So I have what will set us up for the next edition of Ben's Junk. I have a, uh, a new SVHS unit with a built-in time-based corrector, which helps the bleed quite a bit. doesn't entirely help the uh, AV sync, but uh, it's nothing I haven't been able to work through to some degree yet. So let's close things out by taking a look at a couple just little snippets of stuff that I've transferred so far and a little compare and contrast. See you next time.
in there for the hospital now with a hoover up his ass. I rung tonight to see how he's doing and they said he's picking up proper. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>